Hi there and welcome to Wine Searcher. Today um, I thought I'd look at an utter classic. It's uh, Dom Perignon, um, leading name in Champagne. This is the 2010 vintage. Um, Dom Perignon is the luxury brand for Moet Chandon um, and has been produced since the first vintage was 1921, released in the States. It was, it was the brand primarily produced for the States, released in the States in the mid 30s. Um, originally, it was simply a rebottled version of, the, of Moet's vintage champagne, um, named after um, Dom Perignon, the monk, the Benedictine monk, who was the cellar master at Auvilliers. He was he's he's famed with having invented champagne, but actually, it was the blending process that he was mostly involved with. For a lot of his time, Dom Perignon struggled to stop the wine refermenting in bottles because the quality of the glass in those days was such that it was actually really dangerous for the poor guys working in the cellar if it was fizzy. Um, the wine, I don't have an exact blend on it, but is normally not more than about 60% Chardonnay, um, with the balance being Pinot Noir, so about, probably about 60-40. It gives it a sort of an elegance and a freshness from that sort of Chardonnay component with an underlying weight and richness coming from the uh, the Pinot Noir. Um, so why is Dom Perignon today, because it's no longer um, simply the equivalent of Moet Chandon, um, why is it better than any other vintage champagne? Well the one thing that they will do is that they age this wine for about eight years in the cellars so that the wine does its second fermentation, it has the yeast in the bottle during that period. Once that's died the wine ages in the cellars in its bottle um, for eight years before degorgement. So during that time, the uh, yeasts in the bottle um, break down and they release sugars and they release um, flavors obviously and proteins into the wine, but the sugars and the proteins affect the surface tension and enable a smaller bubble to be produced. And you'll see, hopefully, if you look clear, closely at the glass, this has been open for a couple of minutes and the bubbles are still rising tiny bead rising slowly. Um, so that, that gives a very fine bead in the mouth. Um, I've heard people suggest that actually um, uh, the size of a bubble isn't um, a, a sign of quality in a champagne. Well I, th I think they're wrong because it is the sign of that long yeast aging um, and that sort of capture of a smaller bubble. If you um, smell the wine you've instantly got that sort of I mean, there's a, there's a greenness coming from the fruit, a sort of green apple note there and slight leafiness, but you're getting that yeastiness coming at you sort of, to an extent there's a breadiness, to an extent there's almost a, almost heading to a sort of a Vegemite yeast extract note. Um, it's complex, there's toastiness coming out of there as the wine's developed. And these are wines that will age in bottle for, for 10, 15 years after you've bought them. Um, you know, the, the finesse, the good acidity and the body last very well. So, so, let's, so let's taste it. I mean, looking at it, it's got a very pale yellow colour. Um, smelling it, as I say, that green note, the yeasty breadiness, um, and tasting it. Not surprisingly, really lovely acidity, great freshness. The wine has a lovely length of minerally um, fruit running through it and a lemoniness but then at the end there's a body a roundness almost as of a slight creamy texture coming from those yeast leaves again the breadiness the toastiness the yeastiness not so much of that sort of Vegemite flavor which is, is great um, and it's just starting to develop a little bit of a sort of a honeyed note that will probably continue to develop as the wine ages in, in bottle the flavors are very very long they're not overpowering it's not a huge wine but it's um, crisp and quite sort of precise, really sort of enlivening my mouth with its acidity. And yet there's enough richness in the fruit that it doesn't seem harsh or sharp. Um, so yes, Dom Perignon, not the greatest of vintages. As I say, 2010, um, actually a vintage almost ruined by, by rain. Uh, Dom Perignon had to work very hard to um, select out the best fruit to make wines. And they, they made a good wine that I, I think will will last beautifully. Um, so yes, if you feel like treating yourself, great idea for a treat. Cheers, everybody.